On April 10th, 2018, beneath the deceptive calm of a spring afternoon, an unassuming vehicle parked in a school lot transformed into the epicenter of a tragic story. Kyle Plush, a 16-year-old student at the Seven Hills School in Cincinnati, Ohio, was known for his infectious energy and love for life. His family described him as someone who embraced life with a passion far beyond his years. This Tuesday started off like any other for Kyle. He woke up, probably with the same reluctance many of us feel when we have to be up so early in the morning. He went to school, studied, had lunch, chatted with his friends, and after school, like so many kids his age, Kyle had sports practice, in his case, tennis. And so he went out to the parking lot to grab his tennis racket out of his car, just like he'd done so many times before. Tragedy struck unexpectedly while Kyle was retrieving his tennis gear from the trunk of his 2004 Honda Odyssey. The way he tried to retrieve his racket might not make sense if you aren't familiar with the car. He wasn't doing it from the rear of the car, he was actually doing it from the last row of the passenger seats. In this style of car, the rear seats can actually fold entirely flat. So Kyle was able to fold the seat forward to reach his equipment back in the trunk. But as he was leaning on the seat, it suddenly collapsed on him, pinning him in, leaving him completely unable to move. But the worst part is the way the seat was pressing into his chest. It made it very difficult for Kyle to breathe. However, even though Kyle couldn't move, he realized he could still call for help on his iPhone by using voice activation to call 911. And this is that first call. You can hear what almost seems like annoyance from the operator, perhaps thinking this was some sort of prank as she repeats herself. The Seven Hills web parking lot? Where are you? Hello? Where are you? Both Kyle and the operator were having trouble hearing each other. And some of you may wonder why, at this point, she wouldn't just try and locate Kyle's phone. After all, many 911 call centers have the ability to at least roughly approximate the caller's location. However, this process does require additional time, and sometimes legal permissions. So it's not typically used for every 911 phone call. Especially given the fact that Kyle was speaking, it may have simply been protocol for her to continue and attempt to verbally confirm his location. Either way, she was able to ultimately understand Kyle's general position and did send officers to the school parking lot where he was located. Two officers arrived on scene at 3.26 p.m., and they were there for 11 minutes patrolling the area to look for anyone who might be in distress. While they were there in that parking lot, Kyle, who was becoming increasingly aware of just how dire the situation he was in, and perhaps fearing he didn't get through on his first phone call, given that help still hadn't arrived after what must have felt like an eternity to him, made a second phone call while officers were on the scene, this time giving more details. Probably don't have much time left to tell my mom that I love her if I die. This is not a joke. This is not a joke. I'm trapped inside my gold Honda Odyssey van in the Southwood parking lot of Seven Hills, Hills Beth. Send officers immediately. I'm almost dead. This information, however, was never relayed to the officers on scene, who eventually, after not seeing anyone in the area in any obvious distress, left. It wasn't until 9 p.m., nearly six hours after the first 911 call, that Kyle's father, worried about his son who still hadn't made it home from practice and wasn't answering any of his calls, drove down to the school, only to find his car in an otherwise deserted parking lot and ultimately, his son's body. Kyle's untimely death left a community in mourning, and his family shattered. We thank God for sharing him with us for 16 years, his family reflected. Their grief intermingled with love, loss, and, of course, anger. 
the authorities had all the information needed to help their son, but still failed him. Perhaps the worst part is the fact that officers were right there on the scene while he was making his second phone call. There was no reason Kyle should have died. Seeking justice, the Plush family sued the city for wrongful death, and in April of 2024, a settlement of $6 million was reached, along with a commitment to improve the 911 call center and public safety systems. Kyle's story is a poignant reminder of the fragility of life and the urgency of community responsibility. When people dial 911, it's often on the worst day of their lives, and people can act very strangely under that much stress. And while I'm sure these operators must get their fair share of calls that end up either being non-emergencies, if not an outright prank, I can't help but think that if Kyle was taken just a bit more seriously, he might still be with us today.